very shortly, in just a couple moments. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We will be starting with the event right now. Please join us for the Quran Bilala and translation, followed by the national anthem. The Bilala will be recited by Ghassan Gilani of the Ismaili Jamaqana, and the translation by Pastor Sue Sommer of St. David's Church. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us this afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this building at the Ismaili Jamakana Glenview. We are honored to have many esteemed guests among us today from the government, faith media, and friends of the community. Eve is all about meeting each other, so I'll let you guys do that. <laughs> I'd like to start by providing some information about the Ismaili community for those of you who are visiting here for the first time. Ismaili Muslims live in over 25 countries around the world. Led by His Highness the Aga Khan, a direct Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Ismaili community constitutes the second largest in the Shia branch of Islam. During its long history, the Ismaili community has come to include people from many different cultural traditions and cultural diversity, which continues to characterize the community today. For Ismailis worldwide, the Jamakana is the main venue for religious and social gathering. This Ismaili Jamakana is one of the several sites across the country that incorporates spaces for spiritual contemplation, reflection, as well as social and cultural gatherings and intellectual engagement. A central purpose of these spaces is to encourage understanding between diverse communities and faiths. The Ismaili Jamakanas around the world are more than places of worship and spiritual search. As His Highness the Aga Khan explained, quote, these are places where Ismailis and non-Ismailis, Muslims and non-Muslims, will gather for shared activities, seminars and lectures, recitals and receptions, exhibitions and social events. But they will also, we trust, be filled with the sounds of enrichment, dialogue, and warm human rapport as Ismailis and non-Ismailis share their lives in a healthy, gregarious spirit." Unquote. I would now like to welcome the President of the Ismaili Council for Midwestern United States, Imran Gathwani, to give the welcome address. Thank you. The County President, President Tony Beckerfold, Mayor Scotty, George Madison, Janat Sheikh Zohair Baisad, Abel Dawdi Bora Community, State Rep Denise Stoneback, Consul General of Pakistan, Mr. Tariq Karim, Consul General of Bangladesh, Mr. Munir Chaudhary, Representatives of Local Government, Academia, and civil society organizations, distinguished guests, leaders of the community, my brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, shalom, namaskar, liberation in Glenview Jamaat Khan. Eid Mubarak to all of you. It is customary to mark the end of Ramadan with a festive meal with friends and family. And all of you are both friends and family as we have much in common. We also have much to share in our commitment to making our communities and our cities better for all while adhering to our own traditions. We are indeed blessed that we can do this freely while living together in a society that is a mosaic comprised of 17 major religious groups, yet 21% claim to be religious but unaffiliated. Looks like we have some work to do. Muslims celebrate with two major Eid feasts annually. And in America, many have also adopted Thanksgiving. This is also an opportunity to remember the blessings we have received while having a special meal. 
It has been gratifying that after a four year of absence, the White House held an iftar dinner last month, reinstating a tradition that was started by Hillary Clinton in 1996. President Biden commented, this year, thanks to the progress we've made fighting the pandemic, we can fully honor my promise, and it's in no small part thanks to the courage and commitment of many Muslim frontline workers and first responders, end of quote. This is a welcome acknowledgement of all the healthcare professionals who have been involved in this fight against the virus. To all our frontline workers and our first responders, we salute you for your courage and your service to our nation. Let's give a round of applause to all of our leaders. I see Congressman Raja made it. <laughs> Welcome, Congressman. It is also a time to reflect not only on our spiritual health, but to consider how we can help improve the quality of life of others, the poor, the sick, refugees, and victims of war and violence. The list of those in need and seeking compassion is long. The Ismaili community has a tradition of volunteer own congregants, as well as those amongst whom we live. As you may know, our service organization, known as Ismaili Civic, has partnered with cities and organizations around the country in food and blood drives, providing pandemic supplies, vaccinations, environmental and inner city beautification projects, such as tree planting, beach cleaning, school painting, and so on. Recently, we signed a memorandum of understanding with Refugee One to provide coordinated support to Afghan refugees. I would like to encourage other faith groups and organizations to consider in these endeavors to make a greater impact and serve those, especially our neighbors, who desperately need assistance. So while we enjoy this meal, let us reflect on what we can have to really illustrate and reflect our values through commitment and collective action. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoy the day today. Thank you so much, President Imran, for such a warm welcome. We would now like to ask Murad Kaidani and the members of, members of the Boom Band for some in Eve and our beloved prophet. Thank you. Thank you, uh, President Imran, for offering such a warm welcome uh, and to all of our guests. I'm going to take a few minutes today um, to set the context for Ramadan, for Eid celebrations, as well as uh, some of the devotional expressions and other uh, uh, music expressions that musical expressions that we have in store for you. I want to start off by talking about in our lives we have certain markers, right? So New Year's Day we have markers. We make a checklist of all of the resolutions, lose weight, go to the gym regularly, or whatever the case may be. I'm sure this is common to many of us. We also have markers of Mother's Day, right? We just went past uh, a, a week ago. And there we make a commitment to probably be a little bit nicer, not to coast our moms when they call us, either on Facebook or on WhatsApp, right? Uh, be a little bit more compassionate, Eid and Ramadan are similar markers for Muslims around the world in recalibrating and adjusting our conversation and our engagement with the divine. 
And so it allows us the opportunity to reflect back on the past year and improve on our commitments of the values that we cherish. It's not that it couldn't happen any other year. It couldn't happen any other month. However, it provides us the inspiration to move forward and make those changes, just like on Mother's Day. I may not have called my mom for weeks or months at a time. I would still pick it up and call, because I know that that is something that I can do and change my status quo. And so I want to start off with that. And no matter how many times we fall, faith has always been a house of hope and never of despair. And so I feel that that's the celebrating today. Each one of our faith traditions promises us the arrival of spring. April and May are probably my favorite months in Chicago, despite my allergies and despite the allegros and uh, all of the other medication that we all take. You can actually smell the fragrance in the air when the trees, the shrubs, and the flowers open up for us. It actually personifies the verse that was read from the Holy Quran. Verse 22, it was the last verse that was read of Surah al rum which states, quote, He sends water down from the sky to restore the earth to life after death. There truly are signs in this for those who use their reason. Very similar message in the book of Zechariah, 10, colon 1, verse 1. Ramadan this evening, uh, this particular spring, as you all know, coincided with Easter, Passover, and even Poila Boisha uh, for uh, my Bengali friends here. And this allows our hearts and spirits to be revived in the raindrops of spring, the rain from the divine that we just read. 30 days of plowing our consciousness and planting seeds with the hope that April flowers may bring May flowers. Both within our hearts and our gardens, herein lies the plain sight, the secret to the beauty of flowers. They always open up and face the north, the light. All flowers do. Therefore, it is quite apt that this afternoon, we are celebrating the flower of Eve in May by breaking bread with those whom we cherish, whose friendships we cherish. And after the rejuvenating rain of Ramadan, of Easter, of Passover, of Toila Boisha, many other traditions that we all hold dear. But I also wanted to add that one other very important reason why Ramadan is so important to us is because this is also the month in which the Holy Quran was revealed to the Prophet. And the beginning of Islam is set in the spiritual awakening of Muhammad ibn Abdullah. May peace be upon him and his progeny. Growing up in the 6th and 7th century Mecca, Muhammad sees a society whose ethical framework that Professor Montgomery Ward, a Scottish historian, refers to as tribal humanism. It is coming apart at the seams with the rise of economic and social inequities. He writes, and I quote him, quote, In the old nomadic way of life, it had been understood that the head of a clan or family had a certain responsibility for weaker members. But at Mecca, in a mad scramble for more wealth, every man was looking after his own interests and disregarding the responsibilities formally recognized, end of quote. As an orphan, Muhammad is acutely aware of this decline in the tribal ethics. And so he seeks out the solitude of hills in the outskirts of Mecca for weeks at times for his personal search. It was in this month of Ramadan, during the last third of the month, that this tender-hearted man, who is in deep meditation in one of the caves in the hills named Hira, receives the first revelation in the course of his 22 years of prophetic vocation, which eventually gets compiled to the book we now refer to as the Noble Quran. His spiritual experience in this cave 
leads to a radical re-examination and reimagining of a just and equitable society where every individual is not bound by tribal affiliations, but rather by loving compassion for the community as well as for the rest of humanity. One of the most beautiful attributes or names that is given to God in Islam is Ar-Rahman. We recite it at the beginning of any conversation, at the start of every prayer, at the start of every meal, at the start of every activity, which means the loving, compassionate, the most loving, the most compassionate. And the Prophet, whose life complemented this attribute beautifully, is one of the best examples that Muslims find in their own traditions of how to discharge on this idea or how to live a life of loving compassion. So I'm going to share a beautiful story. Historians always point out that the message that the Prophet was delivering was not liked by the tribal business leaders in Mecca and they tried to make his life extremely miserable. And so when the Prophet would walk in a certain lane on his way to prayer, there would be this lady who would come out at precisely the same time every single day as he would walk and throw out trash. And lo and behold, it would fall on the Prophet. And he would walk on as if the throwing of the trash was simply an accident. And this goes on for days and for weeks until one day this lady doesn't show up outside the door to throw the trash. And so he wonders what happened, so he knocks on the door and enters and finds this lady to be extremely sick and miserable. And he wonders what happened and he says that I was looking out for you today and I didn't find you. And then he offers to comfort her and take care of her chores for the day while she's recovering from her sickness. And the story says that she was so aghast at her own actions from the weeks and months before that she profusely starts crying and apologizes to the Prophet for her past action. This entire month, as I was thinking and reflecting on this story, I was asking myself, how do I go from this point where I am, point A, offering loving compassion grudgingly with a chip on my shoulders and by tuning out the voices of those I disagree with, to point B, offering myself in service to those whom I'm often placed on the other side of my metaphorical fence. And so how do I work towards a just and equitable society for our times based on loving compassion? Let that thought simmer while we hear our band, Dhun, reflect on the tenderness with which Muslims look upon the bearer of this radical message of loving compassion. नूर तेरा शमशुल कमर में तेरे लबों की लाली सहर में नूर बेसिकली लाइट शमशुल इस सन एंड कमर इस मून सो रिफ्लेक्टिंग योर लाइट इस रिफ्लेक्टेड इन दैट ऑफ द सन एंड द मून एंड देन द सेकंड वर्स कॉल्स अपॉन द रेडिश नेचर ऑफ द स्काइ एस द सन इस कमिंग अप एंड सेज दैट इस रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द कलर ऑफ योर लिप्स and this is talking about the Prophet um, and has certain tenderness to it that has become one of the most favorite uh, of the nas or the songs that we recite um, in, in his honor. This language of loving compassion is the bedrock of all of our diverse traditions that are collected here today and representing all of them here. And therefore I would be remiss if I didn't use this opportunity to recognize particularly on that particular table, the loving compassion of many in the audience, and particularly your predecessors. A little over 15 years ago, we started on this journey, and uh, Shaheen is here as well from that time, when the center was being built. And the Glenview clergy offered their loving compassion with open arms in welcoming us as brothers and sisters in spirit, as well as in our shared humanity. It may seem normal and easy 15 years later, but many of your predecessors like Howard at GCC or Jerry at, say, Trinity, Holy Trinity, 
Or Father Paddy at OLPH, one of my very favorites, Grant from St. David's, uh, who passed away recently, I just heard. And those at St. Philip's and St. Catherine's, they showed tremendous courage in embracing this house of worship, this month. So thank you. I offer the same sentiments for all of my friends from Ekra, as well as all of my friends from Naila. Uh, you have been a strong support for the community here in BMU, as well as in Naperville, as well as in Chicago. All of our civic, government, academic, and other leaders present here today have also been extremely kind. And Congressman Raja, you have been extremely generous and kind with your time as well. So thank you for always being with us during the peaks and valleys of the community. And to all of you, I offer my sincerest, sincerest gratitude for your love, for your openness, and for your friendship. Coming back full circle to the verse, the very first verse that was recited, at the very beginning from the Quran. The Quran asks us, as thinking men and thinking women, to consider our diversity of tongue and our colors as a blessing and as a sign from God. These words reflect a deep spiritual insight, a divine imperative, if you will, which, in my view, is the foundation of our commitment to each other, that which connects us to all of humankind. It enjoins us not only to engage with, but also celebrate what a friend of mine calls this dance of unity and diversity. And this dance only plays well with the music of loving compassion. His line is the Aga Khan shared the following at the 10th annual La Fontaine Bowden lecture in Toronto. He says, when we talk about diversity, we often use the metaphor of achieving social harmony but perhaps we might also employ an additional musical comparison. We might talk not just about the ideal of harmony, the sounding of a single chord, but also about counterpoint. In counterpoint, each voice follows a separate musical line, but always as part of a single work of art, with a sense both of independence and of belonging. This is the dance that you all elected to participate in this afternoon. And I've come to realize that that is the only way we can honor the kernels of existence that we have had the privilege to live. And so for that, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for making a difference in this very small community, at least this small community in Illinois, that is now part of this family of communities of all of those who have always lived in Illinois. And with that, let me give you a moment. One second. Very soon. Uh, thank you so much, Murad, for your very, very inspiring words. Thank you. We would now like to welcome Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy to say a few words. Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy represents the 8th District of Illinois, which includes Chicago's west and northwest suburbs. He serves on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, the Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Crisis, the Committee on Oversight and Reform, and as Chairman of its Subcommittee on Economic and Consumer Policy, Vice Chair of the LGBTQ Plus Equality Caucus, Co-Chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus Immigration Task Force, and as an Assistant Whip for the Democratic Caucus. He is also the founder and chairman of both the Bipartisan Congressional Caucus to end, to end the Youth Vaping Epidemic and the Bipartisan Solar Caucus. Thank you. Salaam alaikum. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be with you. And as I'd like to say, it's an honor to be any place they can pronounce my name right. <laughs> it's a true story. I've mentioned it. Uh, a couple times before, but when I first ran for office, I said, hi, my name is Raja Krishnamurthy. And the person in Chicago looked right back at me and said, Roger Christian Murphy. Very nice to meet you. And then he said, I didn't know the Irish made it to India. And so, in any case, it's an honor to be here. I want to observe those three rules of public speaking. Be short, be sweet, and be gone. 
And so three points I want to make. Can you first give a big round of applause to all the dignitaries who are here among us, all the elected officials. I see many of them, but I want to call out one who's been just an incredible champion for social justice, economic uplift, and good government, my good friend Tony Preckwinkle. <laughs> The second point I want to make is uh, I'm so honored to be here at this Jamaicana. I've been here many times. I first came uh, before I ran for Congress. And I met with the leadership. And ever since, I've been so incredibly impressed with everything that you do. I'm your biggest fan. The Ishmael. The Ishmaeli community comprises some of the finest people, not just here in Glenview, not just here in Illinois or America, but the world. I'm convinced of it because I've been around so many Ishmaeli people, not only here but in Washington, and I've seen so much of the good work that you do that quite frankly, the world would be a better place if we had more people like Ishmaelis. Do you agree with me? Woo! So the third and final point is this. I'm one of four Desi members of the U.S. Congress. I affectionately call us the Samosa Caucus. <laughs> we are a small but spicy group of people, and my good friend uh, Gulam Al Kalfan uh, knows all about this. But quite frankly, I say that I, I bring it up because I always think of that old adage in Washington, D.C., which is, if you don't have a seat at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> and none of us in this room can possibly afford to be on the menu. Am I right about that? <laughs> and that is why what Murad was saying in that lovely speech, talking about the principal concepts of Islam and what you believe in and what you sang beautifully, by the way, Dun, um, about uh, us being stronger through diversity and in our um, strength and unity is our power. Our unity is our power. And so coming together, standing shoulder to shoulder to help each other is how we're all going to be stronger. And it, it resembles that, say, that motto of the United States, which is e pluribus unum, out of many, one and out of many cultures, out of many religions, out of many ethnicities, uh, we are that one nation that remains a shining example to the world what we can all accomplish when we are together. So I say to all of you, let's get more involved in the civic affairs of our country. I don't care if you're a Republican, I don't care if you're a Democrat, I don't care if you're independent. It's time to get more involved in causes bigger than ourselves, and again, I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, or Independent, it's time to run for office. <laughs> time to run for city council. It's time to run for Senate. It's time to run for the US Congress, though not in my congressional district. <laughs> but I can't wait till we have the first Ishmaeli member of the US Congress. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And I'll be so supportive. So I close with my favorite saying, which is that yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. And so I'm honored and blessed to be with you here for just a few short minutes to celebrate you, to celebrate everything that the Ishmaeli community stands for, and to celebrate how together we are going to make uh, not only Illinois and the United States, but the world a better place. Thank you so much, and God bless. Tony Board of Commissioners, Tony Crackwinkle, to address the audience. Tony Crackwinkle is the 35th president of the Fifth County Board of Commissioners. This is an office that she has held since 2010. She is the first black woman to be elected to the office. A dedicated and effective public servant, President Crackwinkle has worked to transform county government through increased fiscal responsibility, transparency, and improved services. Is also president of the Forest Preserves of Cook County, 
one of the oldest and largest forest preserve districts in the United States. The district receives an estimated 62 million visits each year, providing residents with outdoor recreation and environmental education opportunities. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank Imran Dabwani, President uh, of the Council, for inviting me. Uh, I want to acknowledge Krishnamurthy, who just uh, departed. Uh, he is a friend, and I'm grateful for his good work in Washington on behalf of Cook County. Uh, I want to acknowledge Council General Chaudhry from Bangladesh and Kareem from Pakistan, Mayor Coker from Glendale Heights, Mayor Van Dusen from Skokie, and of course, Representative Stonebeck who uh, has been good enough to carry legislation for the county in Springfield, so I'm grateful. You know, I'm a history teacher, and I always say that America is a great nation because people have come from all over the world to make it so, all over the world. I also say, you know, I grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota, and in St. Paul, there were two religions. You were either Catholic or Lutheran, <laughs> and I was neither. <laughs> Um, I was Unitarian. I am Unitarian. Um, needless to say, it's a minority religion. There was one Unitarian church in St. Paul. Um, and so I'm well aware of what it means to be an outsider in a country which many people consider a Christian nation. And I always say, this isn't a Christian nation, this is a democratic one. And everyone is entitled to their own religious beliefs, and we ought to be respectful of those beliefs. Now, and that's a something I think Americans would generally say they believe in, but we're in a moment in our history when you and I know that there is a great deal of intolerance around religion, particularly uh, Muslims have been subject to um, attacks and disparagement, uh, and we have to acknowledge that, and we have to say this is part of the challenge that our country faces, to live up to its ideals and to be respectful of everybody's uh, faith, and um, we have ways to go in that regard. Actually, two weeks ago, I was uh, elsewhere in the county at a, a forum to talk about anti-Semitism, uh, because a number of uh, folks there had received anti-Semitic materials in the mail, or dropped in their driveways. Um, so this is just Islam, of course, it's Judaism as well, and, and other minority faith, faiths, we know that the Sikhs uh, faced a challenge, and, in Wisconsin, where there was an attack on their, on their place of worship. So we've got work to do. This is an interfaith gathering. I just want to say, we have work to do in this country around respect for faith and religion. And I'm grateful that we're all together today to celebrate the end of Ramadan. Uh, but my challenge is to all of us um, that we recognize that we still have a long way to go in this country um, when it comes to to respecting the personal choices that people make about faith. Thank you. I would now like to request Amina Lakhani, the Honorary Secretary for the Israeli Council of the Midwestern United States, to share some final remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amina Lakhani, and I serve as the Honorary Secretary for the Smiley Council here in the Midwestern United States. I want to share my gratitude to you all for attending Celebration Luncheon today at the Smiley Jamaat Kana. We are grateful for all of the value partners here today from various areas of focus and organizations you represent. Coming together as a pluralistic society is a primary value in the Smiley community. At the opening ceremony of the new headquarters of the Global Center for Pluralism in Ottawa, Canada, in May of 2017, His Highness the Aga Khan stated, and I quote, Pluralism does not mean the elimination of difference but the embrace of difference. Genuine pluralism understands that diversity does not weaken a society, it strengthens it. In an ever shrinking, ever more diverse world, a genuine sense of pluralism is an indispensable foundation for human peace and progress." End of quote. 
The central purpose of this mighty Jamatkana space is to encourage understanding between diverse communities and faith. These spaces hope to encourage community engagement and collaboration on issues of concern, as well as broadening intellectual horizons and fostering an appreciation of pluralism. We look forward to hosting you again in the near future and have an opportunity to collaborate with you. I would like to take a moment and thank the Cook County Board President, Tony Preckwinkle, and Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy for joining us today and sharing a few words with us. I would also like to thank our volunteers who have been working behind the scenes today to make sure this event is successful, as well as those involved in the planning of the event. And a special recognition to our musical performers, our very own Dun Band, Mrs. Sima Natani, who beautifully played the koto, a traditional Japanese stringed instrument during our welcome reception. Finally, to our artists, Mr. Madhu Rajavali and Mrs. Shazana Barani for the wonderful pieces of art that were displayed outside in the lobby. Once again, I would like to thank all of you for being with us today, and I hope that we will get an opportunity to see you all very soon. Peace <coughs> and Thank you so much, Honorary Secretary Amina, performance from the Boon Band. The love of the Prophet shines through in this beautiful Kowali that was originally sung by the Sabri brothers. Kowali is a genre of devotional expression that finds its origin in the fusion of Persian, Arabic, and Indian traditions in the 13th century Indian subcontinent by the Sufi saint Amir Khosrow. Let's give it up for them. Mm -hmm. 